Hey everybody and welcome back to another podcast. This is Life with Ian and Rosie. And today we are going to be discussing how to admit you need help. Now, the reason why we think that this is a good topic is because both Rosie with her eating disorder as well as myself with um, quite a tough year that I dealt with last year, we went through these times without actually admitting closer to the time of the start of these issues that there was actually anything wrong. And instead of admitting that there was an issue, we just kind of pushed through and pushed through and pushed through. And then you get six months down the line, two years down the line, and all of a sudden you are stuck between a rock and a hard place and you put your hand up for help. And luckily we had the help that we needed, but we just want to kind of run through these, these things, these different scenarios that we dealt with and just explain to you how we could have maybe done it better or how it would have been easier for each one of us to deal with these issues had we probably um, allowed people to come into our space or our lives and really just help us on our way. Yeah, so um, before we kind of get into just kind of speaking about the times that we needed help, um, both Ian and I are pretty uh, reserved in terms of kind of letting people into our lives and, you know, we we Kind of reserved. (laughs) This is trying to be kind of nice about it, but... I mean, I don't know how it is for you, but I always try and do everything by myself first. So that has often got me in a little bit of trouble, you know. I find myself just going off the deep end when I do that. And I've learned the hard way. And I think it's so important to admit that you do need help and kind of find that help um, because you can avoid so many issues that way and I find myself many times in my life just being so stubborn about things you know where I could have just been like hey I need help with this you know can you help me and that's just not what I'm like I'll just you know try it my way first and pretty much I would say sometimes 50-50 sometimes I get it done with no issues and other times it just falls apart for me and um, I found myself in this place quite often in my life and so I think it's it's quite important to learn how to ask for help because I know it it doesn't come naturally to most people you know I think there's a sense of pride and for me personally it's a coping mechanism to do 10,000 things at once yeah you know and I'm, I'm not sure if it's the same for you but I think I think for all guys it's like that you know it's like we I think a lot of guys and I'm not just talking about like the people that I know but I think males in general decide that it's better to just kind of you know, rather burn yourself out trying to do it yourself ego. than just, yeah, and it is very egotistic. Like, you know, you, you have to do something and if you want to do it, you got to do it by yourself. And, and you not, in a, not in a negative way of, not like, boosting your ego. I think there's just this, like, whole, like, image in the world that if you can't do something, you know, you're kind of a failure. Yeah, or you're not strong enough. Exactly. Yeah. And that's completely bullshit Bullshit. yeah (laughs) i'm gonna call it it. so it's like we just kind of want to when i give our experience on when we didn't ask for help and what happened you know like the worst part of our lives that we've been through in the last couple of years and just kind of what we've learned from those situations so that you know if you do find yourself in a situation where you think oh well I don't think I can do that 
that's totally okay to go and ask somebody for help or admit that you need the help and find the help, you know, because I think that's what's lacking in this world today is everybody's trying to kind of make it or do it themselves or, you know, hustle the hardest, but it's not always the best thing for you. No, sometimes you just need to... Sometimes you just need to find that help and just use it, basically. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to start off and tell... Yeah, so, so basically I had two really amazing years on the, on the tour. Um, 2017, I came back from a very close um, taste of uh, a world title in 2016. Okay. Um, and then started 2017, sorry, I went the long way around there. But starting 2017, it was kind of like, okay, well, I want to go for a world title this year and I'm going to put everything into that situation. Um, I had an amazing year, even though that is the year that I got diagnosed with my ulcerative colitis. At the same time, you know, I was competing and doing exceptionally well on the tour and I came back from a huge flare-up. To win back-to-back -back events on the world tour um, which was mentally it was huge for me and then to keep going and have Rosie and and her brother there on the beach to um, see me win my world title in in Portugal and then I went the next year and started off again with an amazing start to the year I did really well in South America and I went all the way through to I was leading the tour by halfway, went to Australia, got a uh, third place, and then in Nazare, the wheels kind of fell off for me. Um, I ended up with a quarterfinal finish, which is still very good, and went into a super heat with fellow South African Jared Houston, and I got second in that heat, which meant that I just missed out on a back-to-back -back world title which is really what I was pushing for. And off that kind of downside, which isn't really a downside, but mentally I was thinking, okay, I failed at my goal. And I went into kind of like a, a pretty dark space there. I then went through to uh, the 2019 year with this kind of weird mentality that, you know, I, d I didn't do it last year, so what are the chances that it's going to happen this year and just talk myself out of every event. I went into the event, I got probably my worst results that I've got in a long time and it took me six months to realize that I should maybe be talking to someone about these issues. Um, it was possibly the longest six months of my life, um, which is actually probably eight months by the time I went and saw yeah. um, Paddy. So in that time, I was dealing with my ulcerative colitis flare-up, which happened pretty much the day after the event had ended in 2018. Um, I then came home and I was just like, I wasn't motivated to surf. I didn't really want to be on that board. Um, I didn't really want to be in the ocean. I was kind of over everything that was going on. And it just, for me personally, that stage of my life, I should have taken a break completely. Yeah, I was sorry, I'm going to just jump in there. I remember Ian being in the state of, like, just hating bodyboarding. Yeah. You just hated it. I mean, there was no joy anymore. You didn't want to go so for fun, even. You know, you're yeah. just so off it, just, like, completely just... But then when we... Then I ended up going over to Hawaii. Um, so I think that's... Was that the year we went over to Jen? Yeah. So we went over to, to see Rosie's aunt, who lives in America, which we, we've spoken about this before um, in the Ulcerative Colitis podcast. But, you know, we went over there. I then went over to Hawaii. Hawaii was an absolute waste of time. Yeah. For many reasons, because the waves just didn't come through. The winds were bad. Like, everything that could have gone wrong in those couple months kind of went wrong. And it's probably my mental state that mm. allowed them to go wrong. Yeah. But, you know, I, I was constantly just seeing negative after negative and not really, like, focusing on the positive side of things, which was, like, I was in Hawaii, I was able to get in the water, I was able to surf, you know, everything was fine. Mm. But yet, like, in my mind, I was like... 
oh, this is a waste of time. I should just get home, like stuff this, whatever. Yeah. And I think that's what kind of led me down this, this path of, I'm going to call it the path of no return because at that stage I was done. Like I'd already, I'd already called myself off and I think it was just like, I was putting too much effort into something when I should have just been rather enjoying it. And, you know, I was, I was bottling all this stuff up and I wasn't talking about my issues and, you know, how the, the loss of that, of that world title, because technically speaking, I was, I had the most points for the year, but yet when it came down to it, you know, they worked out that we'd rather have a super heat rather than take an extra result. And that really messed with my mind and kind of like, I was like, I've been to more events, I've done better and, and that I, I wanted to feel like I deserved that title. I think that was like the start of all of this because going in, coming out of 2017, winning your first world title and you can say what you like. But going into 2018, you felt like you needed to prove yourself. For like sure. you were worthy of that world title, which is completely ridiculous. 100% yeah. ridiculous. But you put so much pressure on yourself in 2018 to get a second back-to-back -back world title because you thought everybody else was thinking oh Ian just won it by accident or by yeah. fluke or he got but lucky I did, but I did podium seven of the eight events I entered that year I know that so it's like and everybody else knows yeah. that so I don't think there's one person out there that thought oh Ian got lucky this year but I I understand because your mind's so powerful and you think okay well I need to prove myself and when you didn't win it you were like, well, this was just completely a waste of my time. Yeah. And then the negativity just started rolling from there. And you thought, okay, 2018, no, sorry, that was 2018. Yeah. But like that whole year was so draining because you were, you were pretty much so negative and you were so stressed out and you were just like... But that's, that's the, the, I think that was like the point where I was like starting to close off. Like I was like, you know, I wasn't open to like advice or, or help in that instance. Yeah. And I didn't want to hear anything from anyone. I, know. I was like, I'm just going to do it my way and, you know, stuff everyone else. Like if they don't... You know, if they're not behind me, then they can just go. Yeah. And that's kind of how I, I, I mean, I started getting like that. And I've kind of, in a way, stayed like that a little bit. But at the same time, when it came down to it, I definitely should have, at the end of 2018, I should have gone to someone and just discussed this whole thing and, and spoken about this. And it's it took me... You know, it took me close to a year to start actually like speaking to people and discussing these things and just like sharing how I felt about that instance. I mean, it was just one day that really like put me just like onto the back foot. And then that day ended in a whole year worth of like just downward spiral. Yeah. And I think it's, it's, it's something that's so stupid and could have been avoided so easily but I didn't pick up on those like small hints that were coming through. And eventually on the more positive side, I came back after South America. I had probably my worst results that I had in about three or four years. And I got back here and what year? this was 2019. Okay. And I was discussing with Rose and I was like, I need to go see someone and I need to go talk about these issues because these issues that I've been bottling up have just like, you know, the top's been blown off and now it's like really affecting my entire life and not just my sport. Yeah. And it was at that time that I went and spoke to Philip Nell, who is my biokinetist that I work with and high performance trainer. Slash life coach. Slash, slash close <laughs> coach and psychologist and everything else. And, um, Phil then put me in touch with Paddy Upton, who is a sports psychologist and coach um, and cricket coach, as well as a surfer himself. And 
I went to him and we sat down and we had about an hour's worth of conversation which ended in a very much more positive me on the return and it was just crazy to see how just talking about these issues and getting that kind of just that input yeah that input or that just that voice from someone else just of like the voice of he reason does not even like, know you yeah. yeah he had and i wanted to do that like i wanted to get someone that has no connection to me um this might be different for everyone you know it it might be easier for some people to talk to people that can relate but for me i wanted to get someone that was just completely like didn't know me from a bar of soap we walked in there i introduced myself and you know we started this conversation and he's like what is the issue and i'm like well i don't feel worthy and i i started using these words which are desperation words like i want to i need to and i have to and he just instantly picked up on these things and he was like you're desperate why are you so desperate like the only thing that you need is well there's there's four things that you need in life and that's oxygen water food and sleep and anything else you don't actually need and when he said that i was just like i felt like the whole world had been lifted off my shoulders and i was like okay well let's just go and enjoy myself and let's just go and have fun and not take it too seriously and just enjoy it and that's when we went over to portugal in the end of 2019 and we went to sintra and I got so, so sick. I got like the craziest flu. <coughs> Sorry, I got the craziest flu. I was like lying down between heats. Uh, I ended up surfing drop knee, which I hadn't surfed in ages. Yeah. And I just did it because I was like, you know what? If I'm going to go and do these events, I just want to have fun. I want to enjoy myself and I just want to like have a really good time and just... You know, whatever happens, happens. I'll enter the events. Sponsors are happy. I'm happy. Rosie's there. I mean, like, what could go wrong? Mm. And I ended up with my two best results of the year, which were a third in the drop knee, which technically speaking was a third in the world at that time. And then I got a third in the Century event. And it's just crazy to see, like, just how something... Just a mind shift. Just a, yeah, just a tiny little, and like... Let, just letting that part that you've been holding on to for so long, just letting it out. Yeah. And it was, it was crazy to see how quickly that whole thing just sorted itself out. For sure. Whereas, you know, I'd been bottling it up for a year, maybe more, and it had been to my detriment that I had done that, and all of a sudden, you know, I see this guy Paddy and it was like two months down the line um, on the podium again for two separate divisions and it's just like that kind of stuff you know that continued through to 2020 and the beginning of this year when I went to Hawaii and I got into the event and I was like well you know whatever I'm here I'm enjoying myself I and had sorry this is also when Ian got a knee injury and yeah. was out for about two weeks not surfing and two weeks in Hawaii is a long time when it's you're there for just over two months, you know? Yeah. And I was like, oh, well, this is going to be terrible for you. You know, you're just going to be so depressed and just so bummed and so over it and... I mean, of course, you are a little bit negative at that point because it's only natural to be, but I couldn't believe it. You were just like, it's okay, like, we're going to get through this. And Because yeah. I remember him messaging me and going, I'm in the hospital. And I woke up because we're 12 hours um, time difference and I woke up and I was like, what the hell has happened now? Like, no. thinking the absolute worst, and you're like, oh, I injured my knee um, surfing a beach break. or A shore break. A shore break, sorry. Yeah. And I was like, you idiot. I just unleashed. I was like, why would you do that and all this stuff? And he was just like, it's fine, it's fine. It's going to sort itself out. And, like, it was crazy. I could yeah. just see such a difference in that moment 
compared to if this had to happen a couple of months back for sure you would have I was been a, done. i was a different person you then. would have been done yeah. i think you would have like lit your board on fire or but something the, the other crazy thing was like phil philip who you know I, I just spoke about now he was it was crazy to see how just his attitude towards the whole thing and he's helped me a lot with um you know mental states and everything else and of course i got down like you know, I'm not surfing for two weeks in paradise and the waves are pumping and the events are going off there. They had a surf event, so the event was like yeah, as good as it gets for surf events. And here I am sitting in my room because I can't get up because my knee is so stuffed that I can't walk. And Phil was like, just stay there. Like, you've paid your accommodation, you've paid to stay, just stay there. There's no point in changing your ticket. Yeah. And I was like... Maybe I should just come home and I'll, I'll get it sorted and then, you know, we can look at the rest of the year. And without that voice and that reason, it's like, you know, I would have been home. I would have come home to get x-rays, to see how bad the knee was and then to continue rehab. And then there's Philip on the other side who's my voice of reason saying, just wait. Hopefully it'll get better. It doesn't look too bad. And I'm like... Here's what you need to do. Yeah. yeah, and then you set up this whole program and obviously that works out. Um, and I'm surfing. I've got this big, I mean, it's not a big knee brace, but it was a knee brace that I put on. And that really helped the knee to just feel a little bit better in the water. And there I was surfing pipeline a couple of weeks afterwards doing inverts. Uh, <laughs> doing inverts and I was like, okay, now we look at the event. And I went into that event just going like, Let's just have fun. Let's just have a jaw if... Can't get anywhere. Yeah, you know, no. and then I started making heats and then I made to the quarterfinals and semifinals and then into the final and I was like, okay, well, I'm here now. I might as well go for it and ended up winning the event in the last five seconds. and Which was absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, it was pretty ridiculous. It was a But it was that whole time, moment. let me explain to you, is... Throughout 2017, not so much. 2018 and 2019, I had so much anxiety around you surfing because I knew the mindset you were in. Yeah. You were just so closed off. You were like completely shut down. You just didn't want to take any advice from anyone. You didn't want to talk to anyone about it. Every time I brought it up, he just like shut me down. Like mm -hmm. just close me out and the whole hawaii event i had zero anxiety around you surfing nothing like and i'm not kidding you now it was crazy even in the when i watched the finals at like 3 a.m i was like so relaxed because i just knew you were like all there yeah and you were like I knew you were at that point where you're just like, I'm here now, so I might as well just go ahead and do it. Yeah, I might as well make the most of it. And yeah. another thing that also made me realize that you like have made peace with asking for help mm. and admitting that you need help, which I think can be so difficult when you have a big following or people know you or people have this like kind of... Um, image of you thinking oh he never struggles with anything meanwhile and you look how good he is and look how exactly. strong he is yeah and, and then and behind closed doors here i am bloody like falling apart under pressure and... like just the worst but the moment i realized that and figured it out was when i said when he hurt his knee and i messaged him and i said phone full yeah. Because I know it feels like my saving grace. I know Phil talks sense into you and you listen to him. And his message came back and he's like, I've already spoken to Phil. Yeah. You know, and that made me realize like you got over that issue of I need to do this all by myself because I'm Ian Campbell kind of thing, you know. Yeah. And not that you think that you huge or but let's be honest you are up there in the bodyboarding world you know and I'd you like have think so. you have a lot of people that do look up to you yeah. and it's important to show those people or anybody else listening to this that 
it's totally okay to need help everybody needs help and it doesn't make you a weak person it doesn't make you lesser of a person it in fact only makes you stronger for sure as it has proven in your situation you went on to podium and win events after you admitted like i can't do this anymore by myself yeah and i think that's that's a it's a pretty good thing that that i have too is like i've got this group of people friends and family as well as you know like I'm going to put Phil into the family category because he is, he's like, you know, he's like a brother that can just talk to me and just like kind of calm me down and everything else. But it's, it's so important. I find to, especially if you're a sports person or if you're someone that's trying to get to this goal to have that backing behind you. And if you need something or if you want something, or if you're trying to get a message across, use those people. And get those people involved in your life because, you know, without that support base, it's so difficult to go on and do these things. And I just found that that group of people that I have, Rosie, her family, her brother, as well as all of my friends, um, Philip and Patty and my family. And it's just like that whole group is so tight knit and so strong that I honestly feel that we could achieve anything if we really put our minds to it. And that's what you want. You want those people on board yeah. and, and you want them um, to be there to back you no matter what situation you're in. And if you need help, just ask. That's, yeah, it's that simple actually. I mean, with my experience going through my eating disorder, um, it was pretty much the same kind of vibe, you know. I an eating disorder is it becomes a really selfish disorder in my view of it. It's not necessarily um, on purpose, or it isn't on purpose. I mean, nobody asks to have an eating disorder, you know, and or rather, it becomes. A very selfish kind of thing where you you focus on yourself so much and you you're not really aware of what it's doing to other people around you and for me for the longest time before I got diagnosed with my eating disorder um, I did I did know I had a problem I did realize that like you know I I'm in quite deep in terms of like my exercise and the way I'm eating and it's becoming a lot more stricter and you know I'm, I'm finding it to become more of like something I have to do every single day yeah otherwise I start feeling guilty and at that point I should have already admitted that I needed help but I didn't want to believe that I needed help you know I didn't want to believe that something was wrong yeah, because I think I think a big thing behind that is people associate asking for help as weakness instead of, of as a strength. And, you know, when you get put in that situation and you're so negative, the last thing you want to do is be going to someone and being like, I think I have an issue here and I'm not feeling happy about this or I'm not feeling happy about yeah. that. And for sure that's probably... I mean, for sure, that's where your mind was at. Well, for me, thinking back, I had this goal of I wanted to be skinny and I wanted, like, people to to notice how nice my body is. And it does sound very um, superficial and very self-centered. But because I had a background of struggling with my weight and you know always feeling so self-conscious about the way I looked and all that kind of stuff um, I don't think that's the main reason for my eating disorder but I think that was a big fuel to it mm -hmm. was the moment I started losing the weight and it being in a very unhealthy way people started noticing and started praising me for my weight loss yeah. so I wasn't gonna go and be like hey guys I need help you know like there's no ways I would have done that yeah it's almost like your your goal at that stage was achieved I was like wow okay yeah. let's see how far we can go kind of thing every morning I get on the scale and think to myself 
you have a problem you have a problem you know had my whole day mapped out what I had to do how much of it I had to do how much I had to eat because I needed to like keep track with this and that's so disordered that's like crying out for help you know and I got to a point where my parents confronted me and I think they would known for quite a while but it's such a difficult thing to kind of come out and be like hey you have a problem mm -hmm. you know like it happened so quickly that nobody kind of grasped it until it was like at a point where it was like undeniable you know yeah. but the moment my parents called me out I started crying and I was like oh my goodness somebody noticed you know because I wasn't going to go out and be like hello I, I need help I think I have an eating disorder you know yeah and I fought that help all the way like I did not want it and that's that's probably because of what has gone on in my mind you know with I think there's definitely like chemical alterations that go on especially when you you get to such an unhealthy weight yeah and I just thought to myself this is what I needed to be doing and everybody's trying to change it and that's how I saw it I didn't see it as help I saw it as like they're trying to take this away from me and I've worked so damn hard to get here and now these people want to come in and like change my life and I don't want it you know again being super stubborn yeah but in the back of my mind I knew like if you don't accept this help it's not going to come around again and you're probably going to end up in a way worse place than you are right now and for me when I eventually was like I need help like admitting to myself that I needed the help because it was killing everybody around me I wasn't gonna live there was no ways I wasn't gonna make it out alive of that because my at that point I was already so sick and my organs were shutting down and all that kind of stuff you know and when I admitted that I needed help at this point I was already in recovery going to therapy going to my dietitian, going to every like appointment I needed to had amazing medical practitioners and stuff in my team my family everybody supporting me but I just did not want to admit that I needed it still sitting there thinking I don't really have a problem you know like I can I can change you know but this, the, this fully disordered mentality completely yeah. and being so stubborn about it and the moment I realized I need help and I need it like now is when it completely changed for me and I'm I'm talking like it just switched yeah I started opening up in my therapy lessons because lessons sessions <laughs> teaching brain um, I would sit there and be so closed off I just wouldn't I wouldn't want to tell her about anything and I know everybody has this like perception about therapy but I mean we've both been through it and it's like life-changing oh, yeah. I wish everyone could go to therapy because I think it's so needed and it's not this like cookie cutter like do this this I started telling her about my life and things started coming up that I thought never were a problem which ended up being a very big problem in my life you know yeah. I started remembering things I forgot I just started opening up and the more I accepted the help and like gave into my kind of like need to be independent you know it was when my life started changing and I mean within a year I was able to become weight restored I was able to sustain my weight you know of course it wasn't easy and of course I'm still struggling and it's not just a quick fix but I wouldn't say struggling you're not still struggling no but it's not like all sunshine and roses you know no. it's like 
I have to work at it daily and I have to remind myself. And the biggest thing I've learned is opening up and telling people, hey, I'm struggling. I need some advice. I need some help. And that being within with my parents, with my friends, you know, just letting them know that I'm going through a hard time. I need some support or I need some help. I think, yeah, that's that's definitely one thing that, you know, I think a lot of the people on here I can kind of relate to is when, especially when it's your partner and when it's someone that you live with and, you know, Rosie and I haven't really spent huge amounts of time together because either I'm here for two or three months and then I'm away. So, um, you know, this time that we spend together is, is very... Uh, it's very dear to us. It's like it means a lot the time mm. that we spend together. And if one of us is feeling a certain way or something like that, you know, we've spoken about our communication and how everything like that works. And that's one thing that I've noticed so much about Rose is as soon as she's having a bad day, she'll either come into the our room here or, you know, she'll message me and she'll just be like, listen, I'm having a, a pretty bad day. Like, this is my issue. And it's honestly so good to hear that because yeah. I found that in the past, she would never, ever tell me. It would just be like, you know, she'd come in here, she'd be in a bad mood. She would like break her eggs into the pan and then like eat her food and then just bail without saying anything to me. And I'd just be like, what is that? Like, yeah. And then now she'll like, if she comes in and she's been in a bad mood, I'll be like, are you okay? And then she's like, no, I'm having a shit day. I'll be like, okay, cool. And then I'll give her a space that she needs. And then by the end of the day, she's come out and she's been like, okay, I'm sorry about earlier. Or, you know, this is why I was upset or whatever it would be. And it's just so good to see that from Rose because she's actually admitting that she's got issues regardless of what they are. And I think that's such a big thing for you um, to come out and to actually say that. Because, yeah. you know, in the past, it's always like, and I, I, we both do it, is we just bottle that stuff up and we just keep it to ourselves. And as long as we possibly can hold on to it, and then all of a sudden, that explosion after we release it is just huge. Yeah. And it just, it could pretty much rip a relationship apart. And I just think by opening up and being so open to one another, it's actually bettered our relationship. And we've now, we know where each other stands. We know you know, when I know when Rosie is having a bad day before she even tells me. And I think that's so important too, is to like yeah. kind of pick up on those things. And even if it's just like a, are you okay? Do you need help? Do you need this? And and that goes for any relationship you have. Friends, family. For sure, yeah. Partner. I mean, I think I feel so comfortable with coming to you now. In the past, I didn't. And that was my my problem. Because I didn't want to admit that I needed the help. And I didn't want to admit that I was like kind of still struggling with my issues, mm. you know. And it being... Ian keeps telling me like don't focus on it. But like for me, it's always been like body image issues, you know. Like I've always struggled with that. And in the past I was like embarrassed to talk about it. Because it's like... You know, it's, it's like my it's so personal. It's so personal, you yeah. know, and it's like I I know you see me differently than what I see myself, so it's difficult for you to understand. But now, I mean, I'll just come out and be like, "Hey, this is what I feel like today. This is why I feel like this," and you know, and that already helps me so much. Just. Yeah verbalizing yeah. it you know and then Ian will be like okay what can we do to kind of fix it and that's like nine times out of ten that's what I want I yeah. just want somebody to be like you fine just keep doing what you're doing you know and I think that's a lot of people today it's like they kind of just like I'm gonna do it myself I don't want to bother anybody else with this problem you know like yeah you all have friends and you 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 know, you've got family, but like, how often do you go to them and be like, I'm really struggling. And a prime example, lockdown, you know, I think a lot of 
We're I get know into this a topic, lot of eh? no. I know a lot of people are struggling at this yeah. point. You know, yeah, and very true. It's like you don't want to kind of burden anybody else, and you don't want to admit that you're struggling. You know, I admit that I'm struggling during lockdown. My hours got cut completely. You know, I lost my contract, lost everything, and in the past, I would have just been like. Hmm not saying anything just kind of trying to do what I can do finding other things the first thing I did was in my contract just got cut you know like what are we gonna do kind of thing and that just like freed my mind out yeah just being like okay it's out there it's okay you know this it's not the end of the world kind of thing and just voicing your issues and maybe even just talking to somebody else will give you a huge new like brand new perspective on something that's been eating you alive you know and i think it's just important to i think it's just important to learn how to ask for help yeah it could feel like it's going against everything you've ever believed but I promise you, it's like changed both our lives. But I think the big thing to learn too is like, you know, like Rose just said, it's it's not, or you think that you're burdening someone with this information or you think that, you know, you are putting too much on someone else. But in actual fact, those people can see that you're struggling or they know there's an issue there. But if you're so closed off to it, that's never going to resolve it. Exactly. And I think the biggest thing is like, it's not so much of a burden for someone to just listen more than the fact that you're trying to bottle it up and, and not tell anyone. So, I mean, you'll be surprised. People will... They'll jump at the opportunity exactly. to help. I mean, yeah. it's like... For me, I had a I had somebody message me the other day specifically about eating disorder and recovery and all that kind of thing, and um, that this person was kind of stuck in a difficult place and there was just no way out, and that she wanted to recover so bad and she wanted to be a success story, and I said to her, "That's already a start." Admitting that you are stuck here telling somebody else about it, you know? Yeah. That is like the best thing you can do. Admitting that you have this struggle, that you have this problem that, you know, you you want to get out of it. That's like the best thing that you can do. And that goes for anything, you know, like admitting that there is an issue or that you are struggling. Mm. And that, you know you're not you're not kind of in denial about it and there are people out there who who don't struggle like that who just kind of let everybody know they are struggling you know i think my brother's like that yeah he's very vocal and he'll always say what he's thinking and how he's feeling and that kind of thing which is great i mean i wish i could be like that but for the most part, I think people are very reserved in that respect and they don't want to to admit that they're struggling because the moment you admit you're struggling, you're weak. Yeah, supposedly. Yeah, okay, you couldn't see that, but I... You should put it in inverted commas. <laughs> and you, like, we're both here to tell you that that's so far from the truth. It's actually the complete opposite. The moment you admit you need help and you find the help you need, you, that's where you fly. That's when you grow. That's, that's when, when you, you get that, strong. Exactly. And that's when you take yourself out of that negative situation. And struggling and needing help and failing and all that is not bad. It makes you who you are and it makes you stronger, like you just and said. And a better person. Yeah. Exactly. For and sure. potentially down the line, you're able to help somebody else that needs your or that needs help, you know? So it's got a ripple effect, I think. And I think you, you've also, you coming out speaking about how you struggled and how you admitted that you needed help and how you went and saw someone. That was kind of a very hush hush topic in the, in the professional bodyboarding, um, kind of 
world? Yeah, I think it's like, you know, you, you are in the world too, you're a professional, like, you should need help, you know? You should have this, like, nailed. Yeah. And I think when you started talking about this, a lot more people came out and was like, thanks for opening up about this. This yeah. is what I'm going through and this is what I've done to kind of deal with it. And it's cool to see. It's so cool to be able to help other people. And that's what, what I'm stoked about right now is where I'm at. I can help girls and guys even have messaged me um, about eating disorders and asking me how to... You know where to start how to how to kind of get out of this like mindset and it's just cool to be able to help somebody else once you've kind of sorted yourself out you know exactly so yeah so if there is anyone else i mean if there is anyone out there that is in need of a conversation or wants to voice exactly how they're feeling rosie and i are not registered psychologists but we are happy to listen yeah. and give our advice and help you guys on anything that you're struggling with or and can recommend people that have helped us for sure i mean it's you know the the internet's a brilliant place but at the same time it's a really dangerous place um don't believe everything you read and find the right person for you yeah if it's a family member if it's a friend if it's like me someone completely uh you know, out of my out of my world and out of my life, find the right person, talk to them, see exactly what you can do, see how they can help you, and move forward stronger, better. Yeah. And that's about it. Yeah, so I think what we kind of want to leave you with is do not be scared to ask for help and admit that you do need it. For sure. It's, it, it'll help you in the long run and I think it'll turn you into a better person. Yeah. And, it, and it, would, it would definitely help you avoid a lot of nonsense that you might need to and sort time. out <laughs> by just trying to do it all yourself. So, yeah, that's kind of what we wanted to get across to you today. So hopefully we've done that and hopefully we've inspired you to kind of just be totally okay with needing help and wanting help so yeah and like Ian said we always here if you want to hit us up and chat to us and get some advice or some help <laughs> <laughs> no but cool so hopefully we've we've brought that across to you today and yeah i think that's it from us so thanks everyone for listening we appreciate the support and you guys taking your time out of your day if you're commuting please drive safe stay safe and we will see you in the next one see ya <laughs>